Good evening and welcome to this blessed Tuesday for another show of the law and you. My name is Kenneth Mbabu, Kenya Mbabu and Company Advocates. We are based at Mudaiga Square. The last time, as I promised you, we'll be speaking about properties. After divorce, what next? And the biggest question was, when you go to court and you have your divorce which is successful, what happens next? Does that mean when you finish the divorce, now everyone can take their children on issues of custody and maintenance? The one person can take their car, the other person can take the shamba, or what happens next? And that's the reason why today we'll be delving to the issue of properties. Properties, what constitutes matrimonial property? What can we pick? What can we fight about? Can we fight about my suit? Can we fight about your shoes? Can we fight about your wig? Can we fight about your car, my car, his house, his inheritance? What he was given by his father-in-law or your father-in-law, your presence at the wedding. What constitutes matrimonial property? Are we renting a house somewhere in this Nairobi? Does that also constitute matrimonial property? To help us go deeper into these issues and understand them, today I have a very, very, very good panel of, of advocates, Diana Dirango. Karibu sana, wakili, and say hi to people. Asante sana, and thank you for having me. Diana deals a lot on family issues. We can say she's an expert you know, in family issues and family law. The other person on, the, on, on our panel today, we were with him last week as we were doing divorce, where everyone knows him, Eliud. Ngogi. Karibu sana. Thank you very much uh, for having me today. Asante sana. As, we, as, we, as I've informed you, today we are dealing with properties after divorce. What happens? Were we married legally? That means now the court has confirmed. We were married under customary law. We were married under civil, Christian, Islamic, or Hindu, and, or even civil law. And now the court has said we are separate people. And I think the question that people are having in their minds, where do we go to court? Because I remember when we were doing our employment matters, we said we go mostly on employment laws. There are sometimes you go for, for cases in uh, environment courts. There are sometimes you'll be needed to go for small claims. There are other times you'll be told to go on for Cardi's court. But Wakili, when we talk about matrimonial, matrimonial property, where do I file these cases? Mm. Um. So when you want to have the court declare uh, your rights over matrimonial property, initially, before the Act of 2014, we used to go to the, the, the High Court. Yeah, huh. But with the new Act, sorry, of 2013, it doesn't have a definition as to which court you can file. And so some people have found themselves filing in the, in the, in the lower courts, um, the magistrate's courts, uh, based on how, how much the property you're claiming is worth. However, many courts are directing the matters back to the High Court because they consider it to be a family issue. Okay, and yes. most of the time when you say about based on the property, what's the value? I think our viewers need to understand mm -hmm. when you go to a court and your property is less than 20 million in certain matters, you are told to go mm -hmm. to the magistrate court. And Correct. if it's something that is over 20 million and mm -hmm. above, you are told good go to the high court. Correct. And also, I think one, another thing people need to understand is also that what you have said, yes, the, the new act does not define which court mm -hmm. you need to go to, mm -hmm. but there's a magistrate who will take up your matter. The magistrate will say, you go back to the high court, mm -hmm. let the high court deal with that. Yes. Maybe the other thing maybe we would like to ask is, well, what is the process when you go to the court? What do you file there? Do you, do you like, for example, we were, we were explained by Akil last time that when you're doing a divorce, you need to do a divorce petition, mm -hmm. a supporting affidavit for that. And also, as you answer that, can someone do it for himself? Or do you need a lawyer to do it for yourself? Mm -hmm. Or do you do an organization? What really happens? Okay. Um, I think when Wakili shared last week, he did tell you the process of divorce and what you get once the divorce, the marriage has been uh, declared as completed. And so that's what you use. The decree absolute that uh -huh. you get uh, once the marriage is declared as final is what you use as your main document uh, when you're filing for division of matrimonial property. Mm -hmm. So you institute the suit using what we call originating summons. Okay, and in your originating summons, you'll be telling the court, "I was married to this person. Um, I am now divorced, and here is the proof of that of that divorce." Now, you can file yourself, but we prefer in this particular um, kind of matters because of how sensitive they are. 
we need you to remove yourself yeah. uh, from the matter, the emotional aspect and all of that, and have someone who has no interest whatsoever in the suit to institute it for you. So that's where you know lawyers come in. That's right. And even about you talking about originating summons, the election petitions, the divorce petitions, yes. the chamber summons, the notice of motion. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the reason why, and especially because you're going for properties, I think it will be a situation whereby you'll be able to pay the lawyers. Yes. So after I've done the, the originating summons, I've filed to court. What next? Does it do now? If I file today on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. on Wednesday, me my property is mine. Now, <laughs> what happens now? What uh, of course, uh, we cannot prosecute a case without hearing the other party. Uh -huh. And so, once you file this uh, originating summons, you'll be required to actually now notify the other party. Uh -huh. uh, just like in the divorce case, notify mm -hmm. the other party mm -hmm. uh, using a process server. Uh, and nowadays we have a change of law whereby you can even serve somebody via WhatsApp, WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. or on email. So once you notify them, then they are expected within 15 days to also file a response uh -huh. and come back to court uh, using a proper documented response mm -hmm. stating why uh, you should not get the, uh, the, the claim you are seeking for, for the property you are asking for. Mm -hmm. And now after that, then you are going to ask to actually get now a proper date where the parties will come to court and mm -hmm. and inform the, uh, the magistrate or the judge uh, on the issues. Mm -hmm. On the issues that, uh, and, and at this point, is uh, does this property, when you're doing the originating someone, does this property include children at this point or no, this is property between husband and wife? This is basically uh, under, under the Matrimonial Property Act. Uh, it defines what matrimonial property is. Mm -hmm. It gives three types of matrimonial properties, which is one, matrimonial home. Mm -hmm. uh, then there is household before, goods. Before we reach there, yeah, before I, I wanted to ask this. When we do this matrimonial case, uh, for example, maybe we'll reach, after we finish on the properties, we'll go to children, but I would like us to differentiate something. At this point, is the court concerned on property that will leave to the children, like what in succession matters, what happens is if, 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 if a wife or a, ma a wife to the person who has passed or husband to the person who has passed, when he goes to court, you, are, you need even a chief letter mm. indicating children and saying how you are giving this child. And we'll reach to that point when you get to succession. Mm. Mm. But I'm asking at matrimonial property, at this point, are we asking, for example, like in divorce, there's no even you are mentioning children. Okay, you can mention there that we had two <laughs> children, but these children do not, we don't care about these children at this point. So my question is, at that point when you are dividing this house or cars, are we thinking about the children or is Kwanza Kiram to Tukate Nusunusu, I'm a 50, 70 or whatever, and then now children will come, maybe under succession or matrimonial or divorce petitions, are children involved in matrimonial courses? I think that's it. One, children are not involved in the matrimonial courses mm -hmm. because there's a special court that deals with children issues. Uh -huh. But when it comes to properties, uh -huh. you need to bring out the issue of households uh -huh. uh, when you are distributing. For example, if you are in a uh, polygamous marriage. Mm -hmm. So the issue on now the children who come in when you're actually at that uh, later uh, stage of a matrimonial at later course. stage. Yeah. But basically what you are talking about is the man and the wife who are fighting at this point for property yes. that they look for. Yeah. Uh, maybe another question maybe before we enter into the issue of uh, the issue of uh, what is matrimonial property. Uh, you talked about when you are doing a divorce mm -hmm. you get a decree nisi mm -hmm. and that decree nisi is what you use to go and do the case for the matrimonial property. The absolute, yes. The absolute, after yes. you get the absolute. Now, when we are doing our divorce, and we, we talked about this last time, it can take even a year or two for the divorce courses. And me as a man, I know. To keep my design, I divorce. Next, I have a shamba, I have a gari, I have a nyumba. See, I can sell these properties so that by the time you are going for matrimonial property, me, I'm just zero. <laughs> Even I come to court and I tell them, I don't want even 50-50. Mm -hmm. So what happens, because from what I've heard from you is that we first need to finish the divorce process, then we go for the matrimonial mm. process. Mm. So what happens to, 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 to help us men, that <laughs> women, <laughs> will not eat up our things before even we reach that point? Yeah. Um, 
by the time you're getting to divorcing, yeah. things are bad yeah. uh, in most instances, you yeah. know. People don't divorce because you've decided, you know. You are in love. Yeah, in you're in love, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you divorce because things are bad. Yeah. And you know your spouse. Yeah. You know uh, how they play dirty and yeah. all of that. Also, at the point when your marriage has broken down, there are times where it breaks down to the to the to the point where one of you is being kicked out of of the home of the home yeah of the home or you you you're separating because someone had a financial infidelity and they started to sell off a property yeah. okay so you can go to the court and say i need you to protect my interests before the divorce is even granted or even before you file for divorce uh -huh. you go to the court and tell the court i need you to declare that this is matrimonial property we're not asking you to divide. We're just seeking that you declare this and is matrimony and, and, and preserve this. Oh. Okay. Now, if you then file for divorce and then uh, divorce is allowed, then the court, you, you then amend and tell the court, higher. now we have divorced. Now we want you to divide based on our contributions. Oh, yes. perfect. I just hope you have learned of the new word, financial infidelity. <laughs> So if you thought it's about <laughs> sexual and everything, <laughs> there's also financial infidelity where a man is or a woman for that matter mostly <laughs> with a light touch for whereby one of the spouses is, is is using finances the way you the way you do not agree mm -hmm. at the beginning do you know when yes. guys were getting married we, are, we had this nice chart how you need to spend your money yes before the beginning of the month you have a budget <laughs> and you stick, stick with his budget it. Yes. so if someone is not sticking with that budget you can go to court and be like this one <laughs> as financial infidelity yeah so <laughs> so i hope that it's understood and then number two you should not it's not a must you wait until the divorce comes out mm -hmm. you can protect yourself you can protect your children by going to court but please remember at this point we are not dividing property we are just saying this and this and this property Someone can use it, someone can do it whatever they want, but they cannot sell it or waste it. In fact, the proper uh, language in court we use is waste it, cannot waste the property. Maybe uh, before, what is matrimonial property? Mm. What constitutes matrimonial property? What can we go to fight when we talk about matrimonial property? Matrimonial property basically is a, a matrimonial home. What constitutes is basically the matrimonial home. Uh -huh. So where the two of you live, uh -huh. uh, then there is uh, household goods, for example, beds, sofas, uh, etc. Those are household goods, things which are found in the house. Uh -huh. You can also, there are people who actually go for those expensive paints, paintings that you hang in your house worth uh, a lot of money. Uh, then there is uh, movable and immovable um, uh -huh. goods which now what comes into place is either land, uh, cars, um, movable, anything movable that you actually own that is not inside that house. Yeah. And in other, most cases now, we've, uh, if you're involved in business, you'll find people who have actually uh, so shares, who have actually purchased shares in different companies. And so that also becomes part of this matrimonial property. So what you're saying, people cannot hide from each other, <laughs> using companies and shares anymore. No, you cannot hide In from... Zanza, are we safe? Yeah? <laughs> Where are we safe when it comes down to property? Because now, I think now, when, I think the issue of shares, and maybe we'll talk a, a little bit about it later, it's one of the things that people are using to, to go around people, whereby you, you hide maybe your shares, your properties, in form companies and hide them with friends, mm -hmm. and maybe if, if we have time today or maybe next Tuesday, we'll be talking about even case laws of what the court has said when it comes to those shares where you get a boys club, they form a company and you want to hide your property and what really happens. You have talked about matrimonial property being household goods. If you have rented a house, does that constitute matrimonial property? Or maybe it's a house that, that we have we have built together or we have bought together? Uh, if you have rented a, a house, that house does not belong to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are you claiming in that house that uh -huh. belongs to a third party who is a landlord? Mm -hmm. So what constitutes really is what is in your name or in the name of your spouse. So for example, if you own land in Joska Kamulu, uh -huh. that title deed is in the name of Kenneth uh -huh. Babu, uh, and so your spouse, again, would go for that title deed 
or if you actually have a car, you have your your very good luxurious car, uh, your Pro Box, that person will actually go for that car uh -huh. because it's in your name. The logo book is actually in your name, and if it's in the name of a company, uh, and you and and we are aware that you are a shareholder in that company, they'll go for that uh, uh, company so that they can get. They'll go for those shares so that they can get the Pro Box. And now, when you talk about uh, properties in my name, what about properties uh, that are in joint names? Does that also form the matrimonial property? Or now that one we can agree on a separate entity, or now we sell them uh, and divide them? Or do we bring all of them to court and then now we start dividing them and agreeing on how we deal with them? Uh, property that's jointly owned still falls under matrimonial property. And so when you're dividing, when you're telling the court divide, then you will discuss contribution. Uh -huh. you know? uh, did, you, did you contribute money towards either the purchase or the, uh, or the development of this property? Or were you home when this person was uh, purchasing this property, even if it was registered in your name? You didn't put in any money, but you put in something else there was an indirect contribution towards the development or the acquisition of the property. So for us husbands and housewives, even if that property is not in my name, mm -hmm. but you bought it during our marriage. And now what happens to property that I came with? Before we got married, I had a car, I had land, I had a house. <laughs> uh, we have gotten married. So what happens now to that? Um, you've alluded to two things. Yeah. The first one was that the property that's jointly owned. Yeah. Then there's a property that's just in one person's name yeah. um, that has been bought while we're married. While okay? we're married, yeah. While we're married. Uh -huh. The assumption is that when you are buying and registering it in your name, there's a rebuttable, there's a presumption that there was an intention that it should be for both of us. We because just agreed. you bought it. Yeah. The, even if you didn't tell me or we didn't talk about how much I was going to contribute, the fact that it was bought while we were married, there is a presumption that you bought it for the two of us. So, for example, to bring it in context and also to be clear, because uh, that's what we want. Uh, if we got married in 2010, year 2010, mm -hmm. anything bought in 2011, 2012, 13, 14, even if I did not tell you, I went for a <laughs> safari in Mombasa, I had my 10,000 shillings, I bought a shirt or I bought land somewhere or a book, that forms matrimonial property. Yes, and I can claim it. Now, you asked what happens to property you came with. 209, eh? before yes. 2010, 2000 years. <laughs> what happens to that property? Now, I do not have, as, as your spouse, male or female, yeah. does not have a claim on it unless they can show that they contributed towards its development. Before we got married. You no, have no. To, sh to prove contribution. No. Say yeah. you've come with land. Yeah, land. If at the time of divorce, that land is still just land, then I should not lay claim on it. But if you came with land, then we converted that land to, you know, a commercial a flat, building. Yeah. Yes, then I can lay claim on it. Are you a killy? Surely. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, let's do this. Can we come in court and be like, no, my land was 10 million. <laughs> The property that we built is 10 million. Can you lay claim on the 10? <laughs> Please leave my land alone. <laughs> or what happens in that situation? But you see, the land cannot be, you, you can't remove you the, know, building the building from the at land. the point mm. of, yes. So it can be valued and we agree on, on, on the share. So what you are saying is, if, if, if you help me buy a car, because you cannot improve a car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before we get married, eh? Before you get married, there's this loving and uh, people in, in Nairobi. Yeah? So you find maybe a lady or a guy has helped, even taken a loan, given his boyfriend money to buy a car in his name or land in Kamuru in his name. But I will claim it. But is there evidence that I gave even that money? So for example, yeah. you came, uh, you used the example of a car. Yeah. You came with that car and uh, probably your wife decides they will be servicing it yeah. or next next month they are going for example to buy new tires for that car yeah. and they are going to keep some receipts which when you go for that uh, matrimonial cause they will come with those receipts and say i improved <laughs> this car and the court is able to say actually this car uh, that is now worth uh, 500,000 or 200,000 is now uh, she owns let's say 10% of it so go and sell this car so that she can get her 10%. Mm -hmm. to the value so what you are saying, receipts are important. The receipts are very <laughs> there's, important. There's one place where receipts are kept. We receipts mention are very where. important. Yes. <laughs> we would mention where in Instagram that you need to have receipts. But 
it's very important as you build, as you buy land, especially if you are seeing your marriage is going to the rocks, ensure you have receipts. But you know, yeah. um, nobody gets married knowing True. that it shall come to that. Yeah. At the point when you're buying things and you know developing and we are buying cars and buses, nobody thinks, eh, hey, Naskumoja, mm. you know, I could be asked to account. Nobody mm. does that. And so, I, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's, it, it will happen. Sometimes you don't have receipts, but you, you know you have a claim over that. In fact, if you do say a divorce, a, a division of four people who got married, say, 40 years ago, yeah. they don't have receipts. True. You know, they don't have MPESA records. Yeah. So the court is able to put that into consideration. And based on what you have produced, uh, put on, on record, then the court is able to divide, even in the absence of receipts. Of receipts because not everyone evidence. has those receipts. And actually, Ken, uh, the court will look at, for example, maybe the wife, the spouse was a housewife. Yeah. and she was just a stay-at-home mom, mm -hmm. um, there will be a certain kind of indirect contribution the yes. court will factor in. If this spouse comes to court and says, you know, when he was actually buying that land in Joska Kamulu, mm -hmm. I was actually uh, uh, clothing him, mm -hmm. or I was actually warming the water, mm -hmm in the morning at 5 a.m. before he goes to work, or I was actually dressing the kids and dropping them at school. So that one is taken as indirect contribution. And so she can lay a claim, even though she, uh, she doesn't have to show that direct, the receipts, any receipts there. She's able to say, while I saved you the time, because as a man, also you're supposed to help with actually maybe preparing the kids to, uh, yeah. in the morning. Dinner. So he saved you that time, that time factor. Uh, they say time is money. That time factor is actually factored in and becomes a contribution. Maybe in conclusion, because of time, do we have, do we have, do we have, does the court go 50-50? Maybe when the contribution is not clear, like though you're saying, you gave me peace, you gave me dinner, you gave me children. Clean your outfits. You gave me, <laughs> uh, I'm looking uh, answer. Eh? <laughs> Does, does the court say 50-50 or does it say 30-70, 10-20? What, 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 what is the trend that we are seeing today in courts? Now, unfortunately, there's a serious crisis there. Yeah. Some courts are going 50-50. Some courts are saying, uh, you know, I want to see your exact contribution. So some will say 10-90. And so we are waiting for perhaps maybe the Court of Appeal will give us one decision that we can all hold on to and say yeah. this is the position on division of matrimonial property in terms of sharing. But as of now, it's, uh, you know, put your best foot forward. We have cannot a rely. Working. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and have receipts. And have receipts. Please keep your receipts. And it, what she has said is, if you have a 40-year-old marriage, we understand there was no MPESA, there was no mm -hmm. RTGS. But if today your husband has told you, go get a loan from, the, from your circle, circle, from your bank, of 600000 700000 it looks weird to the court. You said you took the loan from the bank and brought in home with cash. Do an RTGS transfer. One day, you may go for that <laughs> RTGS from the court. Do an MPESA, do something. As we said, we pray for solid marriages, but we live in a society where this is the reality that we are living in. And another thing maybe they have said, and I would like maybe them to echo again, is on the issue of when you go for matrimonial property cases, I would talk a draw. I would talk a zero. I don't, I don't think it's someone who loses. Because already the court has proved you are married and you have been given a divorce decree, Nisi, absolute. So because of that, it's not in question this was husband and wife. So do not fear. Do not go start your life suffering out there. But if you want to go out and start again, it's fine. But the good thing with this is one of those cases, do you know what I tell people in court? In court, you lose and win. Mm -hmm. But family issues, are, it's a place where the court tries. Everyone will go home with something. Maybe not what you really, really wanted, but you'll go home with something. Mm -hmm. There's also something else you have said about shares in companies. Can you really, really expound on that? Because I, I thought shares and companies, maybe one day we'll be doing a series on uh, uh, companies and the company registry, mm. but a company is not their own person. That company that is standing there, Kenya Limited, is it not an, its own person? Mm. Uh, we say that a company can sue and be sued, yeah. can own property. Yeah can deal in properties. Now, in matrimonial property and succession as well, which, which we shall discuss at a later date, yeah. 
um, there's an aspect of shares, not, not the item under the company, but the shares, the shareholding. In the previous act, um, there was a provision on shares and uh -huh. that they formed a part of matrimonial property. On the current act, it's sort of quiet. However, courts have still gone back. It's still a debate, but courts are still saying shares still form part of matrimonial property. For example, if you own uh, Ken and Elud, yeah. say you formed KL yeah. as a company, you know, and that's where all your business as a couple is. You know, you're, you're trading in wholesale and all of that. The shareholding when you are forming that, it cannot be left to, you know, to hang when yeah. we are divorcing, because that's, that was our livelihood. That's all we had. And so we need to discuss the shareholding in, the, in that company, in that, um, in that business that we started together. Or if I contributed towards, say, an acquisition of something, and that thing is registered in a company, I can ask for my share in that uh, company to be, to be determined. And but it's still, you know, it's still a debate. Yes. It's still a debate. Yes. Uh, but maybe the other question I would like to ask: Does uh, when now when that share for for the company? Remember, we said you can go to court and preserve the matrimonial property. Are you able to go and preserve things like those? No. So uh, it's, it's a bit hard. You yeah. cannot place an injunction on. On, share. on shares. In fact, I have a case in mind where we tried to preserve, you know, to tell the court put an injunction, but the court said this one is registered in a company. Yeah. So there's not much, you know, I can do over here. Over here. Yeah. I think the biggest question that uh, that is on people's mind is on the issue of uh, because as we were talking, there was polygamous marriage. So today, I mean, this marriage, there's a first wife, there's a second wife, there's a third wife. But me, I've decided to call it quits. <laughs> so I want my share and leave. So what happens to the second wife, to the third wife, and to the fourth wife? Or even if you're just the two of you, what happens to the first and the second wife? Or maybe the second wife has just come, <laughs> uh, being the Kashuga. I don't know, Kashuga. <laughs> so he has come after two, three years, I just can't. So I want to leave, and I want my property. What really happens? I know people are looking forward to that. We will be sharing that next Tuesday because of time we'll not be able to dwell on that. But next Tuesday at 8 p.m., join us on One Accord for a discussion on pro matrimonial property when it involves now properties involving two, three, four, five waves, or even when someone was married and now he has a second husband. What <laughs> happens when you are dividing this property? I've been having my guests. Diana and Eliud, uh, advocate, uh, advocates of the High Court, and it's a pleasure. I don't know you can say something, Jumbo, as we close and tell people to join us on next Tuesday. We look forward to seeing you uh, next Tuesday as we further this conversation on division of matrimonial property. Yeah, make sure you keep your receipts and, uh, <laughs> and make sure that you actually get proper legal advice and stay tuned. Thank you very much. May God bless you.